Hi guys, hope you're all okay. Welcome back to the channel and thanks for joining me today for another video. So I'm back with another DMR handset here. Uh, this one in front of me is the Retivis RT83, which is one of the brand new models from Retivis. And I've had this for a couple of weeks now and I've just uh, got around to playing with it. So I thought I'd um, share my findings with you guys. Um, so this is um, a DMR radio that's similar in a lot of ways to any other DMR radio that's out there. Um, and it's similar to a lot of other Retivis models, but this has um, two features that uh, sort of set it aside from a lot of those radios. Uh, the first one being that it outputs 10 watts on UHF, and the second one being is that it's IP67 rated, which means it's waterproof and dustproof. So with that in mind, it does appeal to both the amateur radio community and the commercial user as well, whether that's commercial, um, as in like warehouse on a building site, and you know, or offices, security, things like that. It's it's more rugged and it is waterproof and dustproof, um, which, well, as you can see from the intro, we've already tested, but we'll we'll come to that later in the video. So um, yeah, and just on, on that um, note as well, it's really one of the more simple radios to operate. A lot of commercial DMR radios are more simple. Um, and then you've got um, radios that are aimed at the amateur radio community, such as the Alunus HD1, which go into a little bit more detail. So don't get me wrong, you can get the full detail um, and settings in the programming software with this uh, radio, but the actual operation from the keypad itself is really simple and really straightforward. Um, you can program in um, details from the handset itself, or you can use the programming software, and the programming software is one of the more simple ones that I've seen as well. I'm not going to do a full demo of the programming software in this video, I will just show you a couple of bits and pieces. Um, but what we are going to do is have a look at this uh, this radio, we'll do a couple of quick tests on air with it, and then we'll look at the waterproofing on this on this thing as well and see how it fares up. Okay, so I'm just going to run over the top line uh, main features of this radio. Um, apart from the 10 watt power output and the IP67 rating, this model is also going to be released very soon with GPS built in as well. So I've got the non-GPS model, but this is actually going to be built with GPS inside. It is digital and analog on UHF, so it's compatible with um, any motor turbo system and most uh, common DMR systems and other DMR radios, so like your TYT, MD 380s, your or all of the rest of his DMR radios, um, your Alunus HD1, it's all compatible. It's dual time slot DMR, um, common standard. It has um, 1,024 channels, um, 64 zones, and you can put 16 channels per zone in this radio, which is uh, plenty enough. It's got single call, group call, and all call for DMR settings, and it does have high and low power. Um, it's got digital encryption, which is pretty standard with a lot of the uh, Retivis DMR radios, and it's got emergency alert and man down feature. Now, I have covered this man down feature before. Basically, what it is, is if the radio detects a period of inactivity, what it'll do is it'll, it'll send you an alarm, and you silence that alarm by pressing a button or um, turning the volume up and down or pressing the PTT, and that will just turn the alarm off. If that alarm sounds and it isn't... Um, picked up by you and silenced, then it will send an alarm to other radios on the talk group, which means basically they'll know that there's a man down, hence the name. So if you don't respond to that radio, then other parties on the group can, um, you know, basically come and check you're okay. And what the radio will do is after a certain amount of time, which you can set in the programming um, software, it will key up the PTT and those who are coming to look for you to help you can hear what's going on. So should you be in trouble or on, like being attacked by somebody or something like an animal or something like that, um, or you're unable to to pick up the radio but you can you can speak, then you'll be heard uh, over the uh, the um, PTT on the system. So quite a handy feature, and it is um, a feature that's sort of coming up more and more in um, Retivis's DMR radios now, which is which is great. Um, and then it has Vox scan function and uh, messaging function, things like that, and it also records uh, QSOs on DMR as well. So that's just an overview of the, the sort of top line features on this radio. What we'll do now is we'll get it out of the box, we'll have a look at what's um, in the box, we'll put it together, we'll have a quick look at the menus, and then we'll go into some other detail around the IP67 rating. Okay, so this is the box the radio comes in. If we just open the lid on here, we've got the manual inside. So this is a um, quite a detailed manual. 
It's uh, 60 pages long. It's basically got um, everything you need in here to set this thing up um, from programming, assembly, things like that. Quite a detailed manual, um, so pretty handy to have. We've also got some detail on the IP67 rating, which we're going to come to um, further into the video. Got the radio on top itself there. And uh, Retivis very kindly sent me a high gain antenna there, which is a. Um, Whip antenna for UHF, so that'll be handy for um, trying to receive some more uh, distant stations. We've got the battery pack here. So this battery pack's got a rubber gasket all the way around, which seals it um, basically for the IP67 rating. Um, and it's got a 7.4 volt output on this. It's a 2800 milliamp hour battery. It's got the uh, the clip to put onto the back. But yeah, that gasket around the side there is going to stop water getting in when we uh, when we soak this later. We've got a smaller antenna there. It's like a quarter wave um, rubber duck antenna there for the uh, for the radio, and that's 400 to 480 megahertz rated. We've got the programming cable and software in here. Now the software is available on the Retivis website, um, as is all the um, all the softwares for for any Retivis radio. It's all available on there. But this programming cable is a little bit different. You can see it's got the different connector on there like the Motorola style connector with a screw and that's basically to um, form a tight seal around the uh, the waterproof um, port on the side of the radio so that just clips into place and screws onto the radio which we'll come to in a second. We've got the uh, belt clip there with a couple of screws for attaching onto the back of the radio. We've got the um, charger dock there for the radio. So this is a 12 volt input and 8.4 out, 8.4 volt output charger for this. So it's just a drop in charger for the radio there. And then of course we've got the three pin um, power lead there for, for charging that from the mains. So that's what's inside the box. And then lastly, we've got the handset itself. So it's a really, really weighty, um, really weighty um, device here. Actually, it's got the uh, metal chassis inside, and it feels pretty heavy in the hand, which is nice. Sort of more, more along the lines of some of the commercial radios that are out there. Okay, so assembly is dead straightforward. The battery just clips into place on the top here, like so. Pushes down at the bottom. And then the clip on the bottom of the radio just snaps into place and what that's done is created a waterproof seal now around that battery so when this is submerged nothing's actually going to get in there because the rubber gasket squeezed between the battery and the radio and just creates a completely watertight and airtight seal which is great um antenna whichever one you want to use just screws in the top on the sma connector and that's uh, that's assembly um ready to go so what we'll do now guys is we'll get the camera a little bit further in, we should have a look at this radio in more detail, um, we'll have a look at the programming cable as well, we'll actually have a brief look at programming and some other bits and pieces before we get this thing wet. Okay guys, so you can see the radio in a little bit more detail here, still got the screen protector on um, if you only want those bubbles on the screen. So what I'm going to do first is just, going to just show you that battery again, so it just unclips on the bottom here and comes out and you can see on the battery there we've got this rubber seal around the outside which creates a watertight seal around the radio to stop water from getting into these um, contacts and uh, vent holes here. So that just slots into the top of the radio like so, pushes down at the bottom and clips into place and we've got a complete seal around there for when this thing gets wet. Okay, so on the side of the radio here we've got the PTT button and we've got two programmable buttons there so you can program these with a short press and a long press um, like the other Retivist DMR radios and that allows you to um, use a whole multitude of functions straight from the push of a button there. On the front we've got the speaker at the top, we've got the, uh, the, the small screen there, the colour screen and then we've got the keypad um, operation um, on the front there and as I say you can program this radio from the keypad um, like frequency operation, talk group, colour code and things like that so it just makes it that little bit easier. On this side we've got a label there to write the owner's name on should you wish and I've just untightened this to, uh, to hand tight and basically if you take this plastic cap off here this has got the um, little rubber seal which protects these contacts there um, should this thing get wet. 
And if you want to program this radio, the programming cable um, just plugs into the side of the radio like so and screws down. And this has got a rubber seal in it as well. And that just creates um, creates a seal on there so nothing's going to get in. And you can just plug this into the computer and program it via USB. And then that just unscrews. You can tighten this with a screwdriver just so it's um, extra secure for when you're out there in the field. But that cap just um, goes back on like so. On the back, we've got the holes there for the belt clip to be screwed onto. We've got the battery charging ports and then the open lever for the battery which just pulls like so and the battery just pops out and then finally on the top we've got an emergency button here which you can program to um, do anything you want it's, it acts as another one of these buttons so you can send out an emergency tone or you can use this for uh, any other programming software option and um, that's available got an LED status indicator there for transmit and receive we've got the on off and volume control channel select knob and then the antenna just screws into the top uh, via this SMA connector okie doke so if we switch the radio on you can see um, we're, we're on the uh, main screen here now and I've already programmed a couple of little bits and pieces in um, the screen is probably swamped a little bit by these studio lights that are just a couple of inches either side there, but the screen is bright just like the sort of Retivis RT3 um, and other sorts of DMR radios, it's just as bright. Um, I've got it set to stand by for a couple of seconds, but you can change that in the, uh, the software anyway. Okay, so if we just go into the menu here, so we're on a DMR channel here, we've got messaging options, so you've got your inbox, you can create a message and things like that. We've got, oops. We've got our contacts, we've got call log, settings, record, so you can record QSO um, here like that. And you've got a list of um, recorded um, clips in here. And what we're interested in is the settings here. So if we go into settings, we've got the serial number and version there. You can restore to factory default. You've got configuration settings, so your transmit frequency, receive frequency. Um, all this sort of stuff here, colour code and time slot, so that just allows you to program it from the front end. We've got set in there, so you've got your language, your key lock, LED, so you can set that, I've got mine set to 5 seconds, so you can just have it turned on, so we'll do that now. Man down feature, so again that's the emergency feature that comes in the radio, really handy, you can go into all the settings there, you can turn that on and off, you can customise that further in the um, programming software as well. Power settings here, so high and low power. As you can see, guys, it's pretty straightforward. We can select our zone, time and date, tones, so that's like keypad tones, things like that. So if we just go into zones here, you can see I've got GB7MR, so I've got a couple of talk groups programming for that repeater there. So we've just selected that zone, and if we go back, you can see we've got UK wide there and the echo programmed in. If we just go back to zone, We can select um, any of the other zones that are in here. So I've got a couple of repeaters programmed in there on analog, and I've got some simplex channels programmed in there. So if we just go back, I've put the local airport in, which is pretty far away from here, so we're not going to see that well. But I've got PMR simplex channel one in there, and um, I've also got the local 70 centimeters calling frequency. So that's the basic navigation around the radio. It's, it's, it's just so straightforward. Um, to, to operate it's it's uh, it's untrue so there's not really a lot else to show you in the menus guys it's it's um, really really simple quite easy to operate so you know as a radio amateur or as a commercial user I don't think you can have any issues operating this thing it's um, dead straightforward I say you can program from the keypad as well as the software so just on the programming software as you can see it's for someone who's not used to programming DMR radios, it does look quite daunting and quite complicated, but if you're used to it, you'll see that this is quite a simple looking piece of software. As I said at the beginning of the video, I'm not going to go through the complete programming software on this thing because 
Um, I don't think it really adds any benefit. If you know how to program a DMR radio, then um, you won't have any issues with it. And if you don't, I never show in my videos how to program them anyway because it's, it's quite long-winded to actually show somebody. So, yeah, it's um, pretty similar to some of the other pieces of software out there. Um, certainly very similar to the other Retivis um, programming softwares. But as I say, this one is, is quite, um, quite a bit more um, simplified, I found. Um, you've got um, to start you've got your zones set up with 16 channels in each so you can just go in and edit those and rename them you can assign your um, talk group and your contacts and you're pretty much ready to go there's you can go into as much or as little detail as you want with DMR programming and um, depending on what you want out of your radio for my um, use so for local DMR repeaters and things like that it's, it's, it's quite straightforward and quite um, simple um, once you've got everything needed you just select your communication port and you upload to the radio like you would with any other and um, you're good to go. Okay, so before we water test this thing, I'm just going to put a call out on the local DMR repeater. You can guarantee there's probably going to be nobody there, but it's worth a go anyway. What I am going to do in a follow-up video is do a proper test from the local hill on this, uh, this device, but we'll just uh, try it from here for now. M3, HHY, um, listening 235. Any stations monitoring just for a radio report? M3HHY. Doesn't appear to be anybody there. Oh. He's coming through loud and clear. I didn't get his call sign. Over. Yep, yeah, no worries. Um, it, the call sign is Mike 3 Hotel Hotel Yankee. Mike 3 Hotel Hotel Yankee. Just trying out a Retivis RT83. I just programmed it up now. Um, the name is Lewis in Manchester. Thank you very much. My name is uh, uh, Joe Bennett. I'm from uh, Liverpool. Uh, we're just outside Liverpool for some telling tricks, really. Over. Yep, no worries. We'll chase coming back to the call anyway. It's good to know the radio's working. I was just checking I'd programmed it up uh, correctly, but it seems everything's uh, everything's okay. Just uh, go again with your call sign, M3HHY. Mike 3, EJX, Echo, Juliet, Hector, over. Yeah, Mike 3, EJX, no worries. Um, cheers, coming back to the call. I'll, uh, I'll let you go. It's good to know we're working uh, this side anyway. 7-3 for now, and 3 hhy 7 3 enough. Okay, well that was a miracle, wasn't it? 7-3-H-Y-2-E-0-E-K-K. Yeah, uh, yeah. Was it two zero? Was it PKK or DKK? Yes, two echo zero, Papa Kilo Kilo in Southampton. Um, you're not the Lewis that puts the uh, videos up on YouTube, are you? By any chance, that's you? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I am, and I'm doing one now. So you can be in it if you want on this test. No worries if not. Yeah, no worry. I'd just go again with your name. Um, just before you go, I, I missed the name. But uh, yeah, 20 PKK. Well, no worries. If you check the channel at about 6, 6.30 tonight, you'll you'll see yourself on this video. And cheers for coming back uh, to the call as well. Um, just, just once more with your name um, before you go. 7-3 for now. I'm 3 hhy Perform Lima, yourself. Yeah, no worries. 7-3 for now. There you go. Thanks for coming back to the call. I appreciate that. Thank you, 7-3. How good's that? Yeah, thanks very much for coming back to the call. I appreciate that. Um, so there you go, you're in the video now. Um, right, guys, well, we know it's we know we're working to the local repeater anyway. Um, what I am going to do is just going to um, test the audio on uh, on ourselves on the uh, on the echo test on the repeater. M3HHY testing GB7MR echo. M3HHY testing GB7MR echo. 
So we've got um, a good good signal coming back there with decent audio. It's hard through a microphone to, con to convey what the audio sounds like, and we're in an echoey room, so I hope that sounds um, okay on the video. But yeah, the the sound quality on this is um, is as good as uh, any other DMR radio I've I've used. Um, so yeah, so we know it's working. I think what we'll do is while we're here, I think we'll just go through and um, see if the local um, FM seventy centimeter repeater, if there's anybody actually monitor on there that we can um, give a shout to. Let's have a look. M3HHY listening GB3MR for a radio report. M3HHY listening GB3PZ for a radio report. I don't think there's anybody there. Yeah, so at least we know we're working. As I say, I will do a longer range test with this. I'm planning to do a, a long range simplex test with this like I do with all the other DMR radios I've used. But yeah, it's uh, as you can see there, we've got some um, some couple of calls on the local um, DMR repeater there operating UK wide um, said that it was transmitting um, and sounding good. Okay, so let's go now to the uh, bit that we've all been waiting for. We're actually gonna water test this thing and see uh, see how it goes. Okay guys, so um, as you can see we gave it a bit of a soak in there, um, sort of that's consistent with like really heavy rain or falling in a puddle but um, I've given this radio a dry off for half an hour in front of the uh, the fire and it seems, it looks okay, there's, there's, when I actually took the battery off there was no water that had got through this battery, um, nothing had got into the um, speaker mic port there um, either, that, that was on really tight, um, there's nothing under the knobs and also nothing on the antenna as well, so I'm expecting this to um, to operate exactly the same. Um, there's no water in the screen either, even the screen protector managed to stay on, which is good. Um, so just in the piece of paper that you actually get in the box with this, it just gives you some information of what this thing is actually rated for. Um, so it just goes through like powerful water jets, splashing of water, spraying of water, um, dripping water, things like that. Um, so yeah, it's, it has been certified IP67 rated. So there's, there's, um, I know there's a lot of devices out there that, that say oh, it's waterproof, it's submersible, things like that, and they're not. But this has actually been certified um, properly IP67 waterproof and dustproof rated. So um, from what I can see, it doesn't seem like there's anything to worry about. But we're just going to do a test on the um, on the echo reflector now and just see see if we're uh, we're still working. Okay, M3HHY testing GB7MR Echo. Okay, M3HHY testing GB7MR Echo. Yep, so we're working absolutely fine. And there's no water in the speaker. Even the keypad, um, like the keypad is seems to be sealed completely as well because when I'm pushing these in, there's no water coming out of here. So yeah, um, I'm, I'm 
really confident in the uh, the IP67 rated on this thing, guys. I don't think there's going to be any issue with that. And like I say, it has been officially certified as IP67 rated, which is uh, which is good. And that just really does appeal to the more commercial user, you know, as well as an amateur radio operator who's you know going up on the local hill, um, calling on DMR, calling on analog UHF. You know, if you get caught in the rain, um, I think it's pretty safe to say. And from what we've just done with this, that not going to be uh, not going to cause any problems, which is good. Okay, so we'll wrap that one up there, guys. And um, as I did say earlier in the video, I will be reviewing this um, in terms of doing a long range test on this at some point. So stay tuned for that. Um, if you enjoyed this video, then give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments, suggestions or questions, drop them in the box below and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you cl click the subscribe button. And if you want to buy this radio, the link to the Retivist website um, is in the description below, along with links to the programming software and things like that. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think, guys. Uh, it'd be interesting to hear your thoughts on this one. And we'll leave that one there. 7-3 for now. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. Thank you.